pretty dope. Today, we're talking about words. We're talking about the power of words and primarily what God wants to do. Um, I might go a little different direction. We'll see how it goes. So when I was younger, I don't like horses because I had a bad experience when I was a kid. When I was a kid, <laughs> who likes horses? Those are all weird, man. I just <laughs> so I'm, I grew up in LA. I grew up in the city, you know. And somebody asked me, "Hey, do you want to go ride a horse?" Boy, that is weird. I grew up in a concrete jungle. We we had parks, but I mean, I was nowhere near where horses would be. So it was my first time on a horse, and I had a really bad experience when a horse took off. And when it finally stopped, the guy was like, "Oh, you didn't grab the reins." I was like, sixth grade. You know, I didn't know what, what, what it was. The reins had this, it was connected to something that's called a bit. And the bit is more in the back of a mouse for those who don't know about horses, and it controls the horse. And what it does is that if you pull it on this way, it's inside the mouth, way in the back, uh, it will go this way. If you this way, uh, it'll go this way. The Bible says that's how your tongue is. The tongue directs your life. The tongue shows you which way that you are going to go. And then if you have a bit in your mouth, it'd be easier for you to control your mouth than you just thinking that you can will it together. James 3 and 5, it says, In the same way the tongue is such a small thing, it makes such grand speeches, but such a tiny spark can um, spark a forest fire. It's like a match. Your tongue is like a match. And among the parts of your body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is the whole world of wickedness that it can create. Your tongue can create things because your tongue is, is wicked. It can do some wicked things. And it can corrupt your whole body and set your life on fire for it is a fire and it sends itself from hell. Some pretty strong words. It's saying that the things that your mouth says can create something in somebody else. What? What's wrong? I thought you were saying something to me. Okay, so that's James 3. And it's saying that it's the things that you that you're that you your words can create, but the things that you're saying can really make some damage. Like when I was a kid, I was 16 years old. And I'm pretty sure some of you can understand. I'm 16 years old, I don't have a car. My uncle called me up, I'm at work, and he says, hey, do you have $200? I was like, $200 for what? That's kind of, $200, what do you need $200 for? He said, oh, I don't need it. A buddy of mine is selling a car. A car for $200? Bet it, I got you. I had 80, but I knew I could make a couple phone calls and get the rest of the money by the time I got to the house. So I told him, say, I'll have it by the time I get there. So I take off. Now, mind you, this is way before cell phones, so if I were like, all right, I'll talk to you later, and I leave the house, there's, there's no getting contact with me at all. There's none of that, unless you got, I have beepers, it's, it's something else, anyway. So, I get to the house, I'm excited, my partner's coming by with the money, I want to make sure I got there so that nothing happens. I had a weird feeling in my stomach when I get there, and I was like, where's the car? He said, oh, I already got rid of it. What you mean you got rid of it? To who? He was like James across the street, across the way. What do you think I did? Come on, put it with something normal. I did what? What'd you say? Who said that? Who said what I did? Oh. I said very, very mean words to my uncle. Boy, what is wrong with you? You stupid! Why, why would you give it to him? I need the car. You know I need a car. How am I gonna get to back and forth to school? You know I'm like catching that bus. What's wrong with you? Dang, man, you always messing stuff up. I hate you. Sound familiar? See what happened is that I wanted something so so bad. I wanted something so bad, and when I couldn't get it, I was willing to hurt somebody else and give them something that was inside of my heart. The Bible doesn't support this. The Bible says that, let's get into a movie too fast. The Bible doesn't support those things, but what was inside of my heart was coming out. And exactly the way I was feeling in, I wanted him to feel those things. How many of you have ever done those things? How many of you ever said something to somebody because you was upset and you like, ah, oh, man, I wish I had said that. Like the words that you're saying, 
The words that you're saying leads up to something. This is where the Bible was saying that it kindles such a big fire. Have you ever said something and you knew you were gotten something in trouble? You're like, ah. Oh. It's only pride that stops you from saying, look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. That's what you should do immediately. But that's not what we normally do. But what we normally do is we come here and we praise God. We lift up our hands. The Bible says that with our mouths we praise God. We thank our Lord. But then we curse the very ones that are made in God's image. How do we curse people? We curse them by talking bad about them. By using cuss words. We curse them by complaining about them. We curse them by, by saying things like they don't fit in or they're not this or they're not that. We curse them by saying things about them like we, we curse them by adding things up, by complaining about somebody and not even asking if they needed help. It's better if you saw something that was not right and they were doing it, look, let me help you. As opposed to just pointing the finger and be like, mm -mm. what about gossip? This is the stuff that we do. This is the mouth that we have, that we praise God with. The Bible says that should we have clear water, fresh water, and salt water in the same spring? It doesn't make any sense. You would never have beach water in the mountains. It won't happen. But that's what happens with our mouth, though. I'm getting somewhere. And the reason, let me just give it up. The reason why I'm saying these things is because we're in a season right now. It's called Vision Collision. What I want you to do is write down your vision. I want you to write down the things that you want. We're getting to the place where we can find the scriptures to match with it. Because faith without the word is dead. Faith without God's word is just activity. So we're going to get to that place. But what I want us to do is to write something down first. And then we're going to find out where God wants us by looking through his word and finding a scripture for that. But then when we do those things, what do we got to do over that? What do we got to do over that vision? We got to pray over it. And the very mouth that we use, the very language that we use, the very heart that we use, the very needs that we have, the very person that we are and we want God to do something about, we curse people and we talk behind their backs. It's messing us up. And I'm only here to help. I'm only here to help. And I'm, I'm pushing through this because when I first came up here, there was something here that was trying to stop our conversation together. Something, this is a tough conversation for some folks who don't want to hear a lot about it, but the Bible talks a lot about it. The book of James, if you ever get a chance to read it, first it's the book of wisdom, but two, it is, is Jesus' brother, and he talks about the words, the mouth, with the things that you say. Why? Because Jesus did it. He did it all the time. He talked about it all the time. And if you read some of the other parts of the Bible, Jesus' brothers didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Something, something that Jesus did, something that he heard, or something that he felt changed inside of him, started leading him a different way from the inside out with words. We talked about the sower. We talked about the, the parable of the sower. We talked about that. You know that that's a heart condition. It talks about the... The, the sower was sowing the seed and went against the, the hard ground and it went against the, the, the ground that's right next to it, it's a little rocky ground and the one that was next to the thorns. But we never get to the other part. We always talk about the heart condition, but what did Jesus actually mean? It says here in Mark 14, uh, 4, 14, it says here, most powerful one out of this whole thing, it says, 14, the sower sows the word. We're sowing the word into our hearts. It's the reason why. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes and this is the only way we can please God or even know that God even exists is because we hear his word. But he's saying here, the sower sowed the word. And these are the ones that went by the wayside that were sown and when they heard the word immediately, Satan comes and takes away the word which was sown in them. So what does that look like? 
If something was told to you, let's just use tithes and offering. Tithes and offering was something that was given to us. So it's a physical, tangible thing that you couldn't just, it's not so mystical and so, so out of this world. It's something that you can actually try to take out some money, put it in the bucket, and see what happens. All the response is on God. But that's all that this whole world is, a response to God. God does all of the rest. He does all of the rest. If you want your life to get better, if you want your circumstances to get better, sow the seed, sow the word. I'm not worried about the money. God's not worried about the money. He's giving you an opportunity to know him better. But the fact is that you won't even try. A lot of people won't try. I'm not saying that you don't because you are faithful. You're here. But a lot of people won't try. It will multiply. I promise you it will multiply. But it says here that uh, the, the seed was taken away immediately. What that looks like is that when you leave out of here, your mouth gets to talking and you give away the very thing that was sown into your heart and doubt and unbelief gets in and takes it out. There's certain things that you don't believe, but you should ask the question, why don't I believe it? So many people do, but am I so special that I don't believe it? Why is it that I don't believe it? It's so true. In a similar way that there are 16, and there are a similar way there was ones that the seed was sown in a rocky place where he heard the word and immediately received it with joy. And when they, because they had no firm root in themselves, it was only temporary. And then affection, uh, afflictions and persecution arises because of the word, and immediately they fall away. So as those that you've been here for a minute, you catch the word. But you're not really here for the word. You're here just to get out the house and I went to church, check it off the box. And this is not that serious for you because you haven't had anything in your life to make it that serious. And I get it. It's fine. It's all right. We'll get you there. Keep showing up. But what happens is that the very things that you've been wanting to stop, you continue to do. And so the things that are trying to come up and give you what do you call it temptation comes to take away the seed that's in your heart. And just keep, you, keep in mind, the whole time we're trying to get to our vision collision. The whole time we're trying to get to the thing that you said you wanted. We're trying to get to the place to where it's better than it's been before. We're trying to get to that place where it's like, man, man life is good and God is even great. We're trying to get to that place where we can't get there when we continue to curse. Nobody here cusses, though. I mean, nobody does those things. And it says here, uh, and the other one says, whom the seed was sown among thorns. And these are the ones that have heard the word, but the worries of this word and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things choke out the word, making it unfruitful. What does that look like? When the word from this pulpit, or the word, or the or the feeling that you get during praise, when those things, where you're not even willing to raise your hands, when, but when the police stop you, freeze, hands up. Because they have a more authority than a minister of music. But when you put your hands up, what are you doing? You're saying, I surrender. But here in church, you're like, no, I don't surrender. And it's not necessary. It's, to take the truth, it's not necessary for you to raise your hands, for you to praise God. But as long as you are praising God, and as long as you are showing up, some things are actually starting to happen. But when the seed, the word of God, is sown among a thorny heart, the Bible says that the thorns grow. Not the seed. The thorns grow and choke out the seed, making it unfruitful. Question. How do we get a hardened heart, a rocky heart, and a thorny heart in the first place? How do you think? Huh? Pain? Okay. Something more simple. Fear? Something more simple than that. Living the way the world? Okay. Speaking bad words. What else? Hate. Okay. 
What else? What about watching TV? Watching horror movies? What about the video games that you're playing? I used to play Grand Theft Auto, bro, and I had to get off of that thing, man. I used to play that thing and get all kinds of aggressive. What else? Music? What else? Because, and this is where you can fill your life, where you can say, I'm drawing the line right here. No, nope, I'm not giving my music up. Okay. This is just, this is you saying, I'm not going to tie. All right. What about your friends around you? The things that they're saying, the negative speech that they're speaking, and you're not correcting them. It's corrupting the ground that you have. So when God's trying to get something inside of you and the word of God is going, it can't come out of you the right way. It builds up our ego. It builds up our self-esteem. It builds up the thing that is edging God out. It's being super critical of others, like I said. And the crazy thing about it is when you're doing all of those things, when your mouth gets to talking, it exposes your heart. It doesn't expose the truth. It exposes your heart. It tells you right where you are at. Or when you hear from somebody else, you see their heart. The Bible says this in Luke 6.45. It says the good person out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth the good, brings forth what is good. And the evil person out of the evil treasure that is, that is in their heart brings forth evil. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. It's all because of the things that you've poured in there. I'm not saying that you're evil, but evil is evil. And if you're pouring it in there, you're going to pour it out of here. And if you get good inside of here, you're going to get good out of your mouth. It's going to lead the road. And we're getting somewhere with this. It says Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it eat its fruit. How do you love death? You don't love the words of death. You don't like the words that are killing your life. And I'm telling you the truth. I had to lay it down like this. Everything else is going to be easier. I almost didn't make it. I guess I'm almost out of time. I'm just about out of time. Here's what we're trying to get to. The words that you speak are going to produce something better than you've ever seen in your life because the words that you speak are going to be holy. They're going to be God's. They're going to be a weapon to use against other parts of your life that are trying to destroy other parts of your life. You are going to be an example. You are going to be a shining, bright star. You're going to have a testimony that's going to be so strong that you're going to be able to pull anybody out of the darkness and into the light. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. Whew. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the overflow of your message, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you were here, Lord, with us, stirring up by faith, Father. I thank you that this word, Lord, is filled with you. Help us, Lord, to be reminded throughout this week of the things that we say, the things that we're pouring into our eyes and our ears, Lord, that are damaging the place that you, your word needs to be, Father. Show us better things in a better way, a better route. Show us, Lord, things that we can make right. Lord, we love you. And I'm going to ask anybody here today that is not saved, that you do not have Jesus in your heart, you're not sure if you're saved or not. We can correct those things by slipping your hand up and let's pray together. One. Amen. If you would all just please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I love you and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins so that I can live for you. I ask you to be my Lord, be my Savior. Lord, come into my life, come into my heart, today and forever. I'm yours, and you are mine. I love you, and I thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.
Yes. Yeah. 